Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the tractor-pull test-off. We will be testing uh, each of the vanilla tractors in each of their engine configurations using the standard, uh, what was it, 10, 3, 3, uh, 100 meter pull uh, using this sled. I have saved its position slightly forwards just because I want to measure from the front of the blade or blade surface and that's 10 meters from the zero and we'll be giving each tractor roughly 60 seconds to either complete the course or to fail so to come to a standstill uh, due to the physics sometimes they get a little bit of rubber banding going on but if it hits zero and then sort of bounces forward again then it'll come to a halt and we'll call it even uh, we will be testing the tractors through category so I'll be starting off with the small tractors and we shall pick out the first one which is of course the Fiat uh, 1300 DT uh, it doesn't have any additional engine configurations so there's nothing to worry about there just like that and we'll uh, do a hop skip in the step and get across to the tractor trailer um, Sled, I thought we'll get it to the sled. I also have forgot to mention that uh, seeing as there's a weight bridge here, I might as well get a weight of each of the tractors and record that down so that we can get the power to weight ratios just for some additional statistics. So 500, sorry, 5,388 kilos, at least I'm assuming it's in kilograms. I did not actually know if it's pounds, but We'll say kilos. So then we'll hitch up. Uh, a little bit off center, but shouldn't have it too much. And the sleds will be uh, laden with 10,000 kilos. <coughs> uh, the loads will always be at the front and will always start in a standstill position. So we'll set our clock for. One minute and we shall make a start on the first pull. And as we can see, the Fiat's not really getting anything done. <laughs> Unfortunately, the uh, 10 tons is a bit too heavy for him. So, I'm pretty confident we're not going to actually get any meters at all, but I kind of want to give this one a fair chance by giving it a bit of a run. I mean, we might even try backing up and cheating. This just does not want to pull it at all. But we can see some of the rubber banding effect. And so even though the chain looks pretty slack, uh, you can see that the trailer is, or the tractor is twitching against the chain. And, uh, so for some of the other power tractors, we will be watching out for this. And, uh, I am just using standard keyboard inputs. Uh, there's no ad additional like power or transmission mods or anything like that. Uh, we are just trying to see if this thing can make a pull or not and we're coming down to 2, 1 and 0 time is up this tractor has had its one minute to make an attempt and unfortunately it's left wanting we haven't really gotten anywhere so I'm going to call that one a complete do not, or did not finish so nice try little Fiat but uh, it's okay I was looking through the stats and there was something about uh, 18 other tractors that have less power than this, so <laughs> I'm pretty confident we're going to see some uh, similar results. But we'll uh, park him to one side and we'll reset the map and we'll come back in and do it again. Okay, so we have entrant number three. Now I say three because there is one mod tractor, Skittles the Valtra, but we'll uh, come to him when we get to the medium division. Uh, the fear was a entrant number one with no result, unfortunately. Uh, this one is the Valtra A series, running the A104 engine at 100 horsepower. The weight is 4086, giving us a power to weight ratio of approximately 24.47 horsepower per ton. So we'll uh, fire up, hook up, and let her rip. Okay. All tightened up and uh, 
Let's give her a go on three, two, one, go. Now, one thing I am noticing is there seems to be a lot more bias to the front wheels for the power. Um, so the back have definitely got traction, but without any locking center differential, we're just spinning the lightweight front tires. So there is a chance that this might actually have a bit more of a chance uh, if I hadn't the front weights attached, but we are using standard tires on all applications, so whatever the tractor comes is what it comes with. No fitting dualies or extra, you know, ultra wide tires with weights or anything. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, being part of the sub 150 horsepower class, I've got a feeling we're going to be seeing a trend with these ones. And uh, that's really not moving it at all, at least not in an appreciable manner. And we've got less than 10 seconds on the clock. Unfortunately, and the little Lay Series 104 is not really doing us any favours, and time is up. No such luck. So, uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to relegate this one to the waste paper basket, and uh, yeah, we'll move along and reset the map yet again, and come on to our next contestant. Alrighty, so we have our third contestant all lined up. Third contestant? Fourth contestant, sorry. Fourth? Yeah, fourth. Hmm. Uh, the A series, this time with the A114 or 114 engine. So we go up to 110 horsepower from 100. The weight, interestingly, stays the same, so there's a slight improvement in the power to weight ratio, but we're still under that 150 that the Fiat was having trouble with, so. We'll uh, get across there and see if that makes a difference. Alrighty. Latched on, tensioned up, and uh, let's make a go of it. Seeing more of a steady flow of power to the rear wheels. Uh, the front wheels aren't skipping around so much, but once again, I'm not really noticing any real movement from the trailer. This is uh, 10 tons right at the front of the sled, so well, it's probably take a certain figure or talk to be able to move it. But I'd be curious to see if there's any major differences further up the ranks when we uh, have something with a bit better of a power to weight ratio. Uh, we're currently dealing with a 26.92 horsepower per ton compared to the Fiat, which had 27.83. So it's still down on the Fiat. But um, you know, 10 seconds left on the, uh, on the clock as of now. And uh, I think we're getting a little bit of movement, but not really enough to be appreciable. Uh, 2, 1, and 0. And unfortunately, it looks like without your A series family, there's a complete no show. So, not enough of an appreciable difference. So, unfortunately, we'll have to uh, pack these guys away and uh, relegate them to trailer duty. On to the next player. Alrighty. Next up, we have the Fend uh, 500 favorite. Favorite? Yeah, I'm going to call it my favorite. I'm going to butcher a lot of the names. Uh, this one is running the 511C engine of 115 horsepower, and out of the contestants so far, all four of them, uh, this one has the worst power to weight ratio, unfortunately. Although I do like that for a small tractor, it does come with a front PTO and linkage, and yeah, colour scheme aside, it's a pretty good value for money, I'd say. Let's get ourselves all patched on and tensioned up. Okay. And once again, we've got a customary 60 seconds to see if they can get any sort of movement, otherwise, uh, we'll go from there. I'm noticing we're getting even slippage across the wheels, so maybe the longer bonnet or longer wheelbase does help out with the front traction, uh, allowing it to put more power 
power to the four corners, but once again, I'm not really seeing any movement from the sled itself. Uh, not entirely unexpected. Again, this is only 115 horsepower compared to the Fiat, which was running 150, but all's fair in love and war. We have to keep testing them until we can find either a winner or a loser. And unfortunately, it looks like at 10 tons, it might be just a little bit much for these small little tractors, which is a shame. Uh, we still have about 10 seconds left on the clock, and I'm just looking at the ground, I'm not seeing any extra distance gained, so despite all its promise and how functional this thing is, unfortunately, that's it. 60 seconds, and we've got nothing. Though I will say, colour scheme aside, I actually don't mind this little tractor, I think it's quite the it's got a decent sort of noise. I like how the smokestack and the air cleaner are well out of way of the cab view. Yeah, it's, it's got a certain charm to it. But, uh, unfortunately, its charm's not pulling heavy loads. So uh, we'll let this one go. Get the next one with a bigger engine, and uh, we'll see what we can come up with then. Alrighty, so we're back now with the Fent 500, uh, Fent 500 favourite. This one has the 515C or 515C engine at 150 horsepower. Of course the weight stays the same, because for some reason a bigger engine doesn't necessarily mean extra weight. I'll be interested to see again if any have any difference at all. But uh, we're now back up to 150. The power to weight ratio is still down on the Fiat, but maybe this will make up for it with better torque. there and uh, let's make a go of it. Now similar to the voucher I'm seeing a little bit more sort of front spin rather than rear spin. But similar to all the contestants so far I don't really think we're getting any sort of movement at all might be inching it, but for 30 seconds and we, yeah, we're not even done 10 meters yet, I'm not particularly confident that we're going to see any result, at least not yet. So just cut along, coming down to 15 seconds left on the clock, and unless I'm mistaken we have gained all of about an inch. <laughs> At least it's got that in its favour. But, unfortunately, well, that is time. And, yep, similar sort of results. Looks like 150 horsepower is just not going to be enough to cut it for this particular sled. So, it does make me wonder if I should skip over the rest of the tractors below 150 horsepower, but we even have a few medium, medium sized tractors that are below the 150 horsepower mark, so <laughs> this could be a bit more of a challenge than I initially thought. But uh, we'll stick the fence down to one side for now, and uh, we'll move on to the next contestant. Alrighty, so in the name of speeding this up a little, given that we've not had much success with the sub-150 horsepower tractors, uh, I've decided to just grab a selection of range and just do them one after the other rather than reloading, because if we're not going to get any movement from the trailer, then we might as well just unhitch and switch to the next tractor. So our next contestant will be the Astara, uh, this is the ST Max 105, which is running 105 horsepower, funny enough. Uh, it has no engine options, so it's the only one, but it does have its own front weight, so maybe that will help, maybe it won't. Next up we have the New Holland T5, T5 100, with 99 horsepower. This is the weakest tractor in the entire game. It doesn't even cross 100 horsepower, so false advertising. If someone get a Sharpie, cross that 100 out, and let's put a 99 on the side of that. But, yeah, get bigger. After that, we have the T5, T5 120. This is 117 horsepower, and out of the group so far, it'll have the best power to weight ratio of 30.9 horsepower per tonne. So, maybe it's slightly lighter weight with the... Um, extra power will make a difference, but I'm not really seeing it because it's still below the 150 mark. After that we have the Lindner, Lindner 
Lintrack 90. This one also does not have an engine upgrade. It's stuck at a standard of 102 horsepower. Um, funnily enough, it actually weighs less. It weighs more than the T5. Yeah, it's 3,800 kilos, uh, or 3.8 ton versus the 3.7 ton of the New Holland, which is funny because I mean, look at the size difference. <laughs> the Lind is such a cute little thing. But the interesting thing to note about this tractor is it does actually have four-wheel steering, or at least a little bit of four-wheel steering. The um, rear wheels will twist and turn uh, yeah, for tighter turning circles, so it does actually make it a very good little runaround tractor for you know, light farm work when you put a front loader and all the rest of it onto it. It's a nice little unit. After that, we finally have a difference between engines and weights. The Massey Ferguson, we have the MF 5600 or 5600 series, and first we have the 5610 with uh, 105 horsepower, and the 5613 at 130 horsepower, so uh, not including the Fent uh, 500 and the Fiat, this is the most, well, it's, it's, this is up there with the power of the small tractors. Uh, we still have the Valtra N series, which actually does exceed the 200 mark, but we'll come back to those guys when we get to them. So anyway, enough messing around with the showcase. Uh, <clears throat> we'll get on to contestant number seven, the Stara, and uh, we'll see if we can power through these sled pulls. No pun intended.
so it looks like unfortunately none of those contenders were able to make any sort of movement with the trailer. But we have to chalk them all down as uh, did not finish timeout. And uh, we have two more, three more contenders in the small tractor market. <coughs> we have the arm track, which I don't think is going to do it because it's only got 110. Let's move that up. We have a couple for the Bent 300 Vario series. And then finally, once we get to the voucher, I think this is where we're going to have some success. At least not for the first two models. But this one at 201 horsepower, I have a good feeling about. So I will just skip ahead and bring them all out and uh, get the numbers and we'll give them a go. Okay, so we've got the last of the uh, tractors all lined up, and unfortunately every single one of these is below 150 horsepower except for the last of the two Valtra N series. The N154E has 165 horsepower, so it's in there with a the shot over the Fiat, and the N174 has 200 horsepower, specifically 201. Uh, so that's the highest powered small class tractor. So I'm hoping we'll actually start to see a result. Unfortunately, as we can tell from the lineup, it's last in line. So we'll uh, jump in our uh, armor track 1104 at 110 horsepower, and uh, we'll give her a crack. Seeing as that isn't working, uh, I have one more trick up my sleeve and then we'll see what the result is. Give me a moment, I'm just going to see if we can uh, help the voucher appreciate the weight of the situation. Alrighty, so we're now on the CF traction is an issue with the tractor. Once again, we are running the N series with the 174 engine, 201 horsepower, but we've added some wheel weights to the rear, so apparently one ton each, two tons, and we've also added a pair of 300 and no, three, 3.3 ton uh, weights, one at the front, one at the rear. 
So we've basically strapped a pair of T5s to either end of this tractor and put a couple of hatchbacks under the wheels, giving us a total of uh, 20.6 tonnes, or it works out to 14.470 um, tonnes heavier than standard. So I don't think this is going to work actually, I don't think this weight has a hitch on it. I've just realised. Okay, we can sneak the chain underneath. Yep, still clears it. Okay, so with an extra nearly 14.5 tons worth of weight, can we get any movement from this trailer? Well, let's go. Hey! So it looks like traction was the big letdown, and this. <clears throat> but, uh, we now have one minute to see how far we can pull, and uh, we'll see what the distance measures it up as. Oh, we've cracked the 10 meter mark, so that's a decent showing from the little of Altra. Close to 10 seconds left, we'll barely crack the 20 meter mark. It's good to see some progress finally. 4, 3, 2, 1, and time is up. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we will measure from the front of the blade surface, which is about there. Oops. And, and as we can see, we've got the measurement down the bottom in meters. So we'll walk out the tape measure, and uh, as I said, the zero meter mark is actually lines up quite nicely with this little missing patch of grass. So we'll come to here, and 23.51. So yeah, it is possible to pull a sled with around 200 horsepower, but you just need enough weight to overcome the 10 tons stuck in the ground. <laughs> Go figure. Uh -huh. I suppose that's more of a traction coefficient thing, but uh, good to see we finally got a result. So anyway, that does it for all the small tractors, and we will next move up into the medium class. We'll go back to the standard rules of standard tyres, standard tractors, and I'll be calculating all the weights and everything else, and uh, seeing what the result is going to be. So thank you for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.